A year after its birth and the Premiership had delivered a new breed of champions. But alongside them had risen a new breed of challenger, each wondering if the title would go their way. This will be some goal. It is as well. John Fashnu hit the headlines literally when a collision put the Spurs captain out of action for the majority of the season. Britain's athletes received government funding and Linford Christie returned home victorious as world champion. The champions took the charity shield honours in the season's curtain raiser. Back by Cantona and volleyed in by Mark Hughes. And Michael saves and Manchester United celebrate. Peter Reid was the first manager to face the axe from his club after poor results. It may seem as a panic measure, but no, because uh, in this day and age you, you must have a long-term strategy. United were the first champions. The defence of their Premiership title starts today. The Canaries are out to prove that last season was no fluke. We finished well last year and we want to prove it wasn't a fluke and stay out there again this season. So to do that, we need to win our, all our league games if we can. Erwin takes the corner. Keane. Hughes, there's no flag from the lines, but gun back pedalling. It comes for Giggs. It nettles in the corner of the net. The champions have taken the lead at Carrow Road. Well, then, and you go against it. Hughes for Robson. They lead at the right time. Many congratulations. How pleased were you to get underway with a win? Well, considering la last season's start, I think we're well, well pleased. One of the early upsets or relegation favourites, Coventry, make light work of FA Cup holders Arsenal. Mick Gwynn's hat trick proving to be decisive. Liverpool new boy Nigel Clough made his Anfield debut with a brace of goals against the desperate Sheffield Wednesday outfit. Nicole with Clark. Clark again. Oh, yes. A marvellous goal by Nigel Clark. Yonaby with the corner. He goes runner. And a goal from Clark again. Oh, it's a dream debut. Arsenal will be up there challenging, and if I've got anything to do with it, you know, we'll be well up there. Eat your heart out, Frazier and Ali, which is just to prove I'm up with the pop scene. The champions took one of their most comfortable wins against Sheffield United. Yeah. 
Everton reveling in the goals of Tony Cotty went top after beating Sheffield United 4-2. triumph as Swindon finally made it to the big time but they've already discovered how tough life is up there and today they face a rampant Liverpool team who aim to go top they went forward they always looked liable to score because um, to be fair to them they've got some quality players and the finishing was excellent we can get so much better and I think um, the time to come back and say well what's different will be either at the end of the season or somewhere near the end of the season not now those who don't know you at all think of jewellery and champagne and sunshine breaks well there you go you're straight away you're talking about is that an image that you've cultivated or not really it's an image you and your people have cultivated not me but you've been happy to go along with it? No, nope. never never cultivated, never pushed it, never perused it. Just been what I am. But get very annoyed when people like you and people in your industry start bringing that up. Okay. Never gets mentioned that every football team I go to seems to do quite well. We might get on to that. Good lad. Giggs, Ince has carried on with his run, chance here for Manchester United, and still could be a goal, here's for Lee Sharp. Now here's Daly and Atkinson, Saunders has pulled away to the far post, Atkinson might go on his own. <laughs> Away by Ince, only as far as Kevin Richardson, who's lining this one up, and it hits the post! What action we're having here at Villa Park. Still gigs. Can he do it? Oh, the inside of the post. Can you believe it? Here is Sharp. One on one. Here's a chance for his second goal in United. Second one, he's taken it. 2 1. And it's a glory night for young Lee Sharp. At the end of the day, a truly great game for spectators. The only neutral was at that game. If we want to come back and see it again. Here's Rush. And it's in. Ian Rush scores his 200th league goal for Liverpool. Leeds United and Oldham Athletic coming out to a very big reception here at Allen Road. And that's Dean getting up well. Nodded on here for speed. And Strachan in some space here. Chance for Leeds United. And a goal! Leeds United lead. And Gordon Strachan answers his critics with a goal. And that's the first time, really, including the Norwich game, including the Norwich game, when for 45 minutes we've po probably been as uncohesive as, as we've been this season. But we won. Funny old game. Attendances are up in the FA Carling Premiership. There's been 136 goals already. Everybody, it seems, is feeling good. Ah, I feel good. I knew that I wouldn't. I feel good. I knew that I wouldn't.
With a new season well underway, September saw Sky undergo a multi-channel relaunch. Rupert Murdoch confident of further success. You can see that a mighty industry is emerging. Politicians like to say that the most important 12-letter word in the English language today is jobs, jobs, jobs. With qualification pressures mounting, England captain Stuart Pearce helped these World Cup warriors with a win against Poland. And with happier times of the club behind him, Terry Venables finally lost the battle and parted company with Spurs. Manchester United started the month well, going three points clear of the chasing pack at the top. Sheffield Wednesday, still searching for their first win of the season, thought they finally had it when they went 3-0 up in the second half against Norwich. But the Canaries had different ideas. United travelled to Stamford Bridge in buoyant mood, unbeaten in 17 league games. Already looking like they had control of the campaign. But Chelsea made them look again. Keane making a run now. It's a beautiful run. Well read though by Caris. Oh, Katana Karin's out of possession. And, oh, it's hit the bar. And we are robbed by that of what would have been an extraordinary goal. Hobble. Down, coming from the left, Cascarino through the middle. Clark has the shot, awkward for the goalkeeper, Peacock passes, Chelsea leads. Unlock here. Oh, Wilcox. It's Blackburn Rovers. Are they going to take the lead here through Gallagher? They're not. Ripley. This will be Blackburn's ball with Sherwood. The shot stops it being Blackburn's goal. Oh, it was misjudged and brilliantly taken by Mike Newell. Brilliantly taken. It deceived Liverpool collectively and Kenny Jowfleish leads the applause. Robillard charged off his line. Wilcox deflected against the bar. Newell. Was it over the line? No. The linesman in the perfect place. No goal. An amazing episode. It's very special to come here. I've been watching for 20 odd years from here and uh, to get the win is delighted, yeah. Arsenal were making a title challenge of their own. Gunners marksman Kevin Campbell hitting Ipswich for three. Arsenal back on level points with United.
later, Blackburn hoping to take top spot were less than impressive when they entertained West Ham. Merseyside Derby provided plenty of excitement as usual. Hit this cross. Ruddock misjudging. Ride out do something here. Potty on hand. Ride out. Air ball straight at the goalkeeper. And he hit it hard. But two straight. And Bruce Grobola. Very grateful for that. She's gone to the other side again. Pinchcliffe can really veer the ball in with his left foot. Does it with pace and swerve from McManaman. Only to Mark Wall. And it's in through the crowd like an arrow into the corner of the Liverpool man. And Grubbala feels that McManaman, look at this. That's what it means to concede a goal in a Merseyside derby. Here's Holmes. Right out. Not by right. Cotty. Can he get it back here? Tony Cotty. Tony Cotty still. Still Cotty. The persistence pays off. And Everton now will believe that they've beaten Liverpool. Five minutes to go. One thing that did happen today, we saw Bruce Grubbler give Steve McManaman a real flea in his ear for the way the first goal was conceded. Was that something fresh for you to see and a warning if you make mistakes like that? Yeah, um, Ludo uh, couldn't speak very good English, so he couldn't. Um, obviously, he had a go at people, but not like that. Terrific turn to get away from Scott. What can he create here? And Waddle trying to find, and the shot hits the post from Sheridan. Terrific football that from Sheffield Wednesday. That's what they can do. Is Alan again? He looks sharp at the moment. Oh, well, that comes back. It's cold. That's a goal for Newcastle United. Empty goal. The noise here is quite incredible. And Andy Cole strikes for the fourth time this season. Now Waddle opening up a bit here, maybe for Sheridan and then Sinton, and he scored. And Sheffield Wednesday a level, and Andy Sinton has scored for the second game running. Terrific work from Waddle. Dangerous cross, and in it goes. The goal from Sinton again. And Waddle has provided an answer to those who were booing him. Oh, and here's Matthew. This could be a picture book for him, could it? Matthew just about gets it back, back in there. Lee and Cole on the turn. It's for Newcastle United. And St James's Park goes potty. Well, how can you stop this kid and your goal? Great, Tom. Lovely finish. Newcastle here. Now, sense that maybe they can get the win. Matthew with a very good run indeed. This is Crook. Oh, an excellent through ball. Off goes Ekoku. Hinchcliffe trying to get back at him. But there's the equaliser. Only as far as Polston. And he's sent Sutton away. Ekoku at the far post. And this is Ekoku. And Norwich take the lead. 
to Sutton. And they're onside. Fox is away. He's got Ekoku up with him as well. Southall with a save. But Ekoku has to score. Ekoku. We had a bad start against Coventry. Uh, we got a bit of a hiding. And we've recovered well since then. And uh, we're, going, we're going along just nice, and nice just now. Up for Cantona. Oh, a real cracker from Cantona. Eric Cantona, he was described by Alex Ferguson as the final piece in the jigsaw when he bought him. Cheap at a million pounds, you would have thought. Manchester United have been in seventh heaven since. Hoddle hoped the goals would start flooding in after signing Mark Steen. I've had confidence in my ability and I've, I've always wanted to prove to like myself and I suppose a lot of other people that I could do it on like you know regular basis in the Premier League. While parts of Britain witnessed the worst floods for many years. City beat Bundesliga heavyweights Bayern Munich in their UEFA Cup tie. Maybe. Really the champions resumed their winning ways at the start of the month. White Hart Lane, bathed in sunshine, glorious conditions. Spurs and Everton on Super Sunday. Usually guaranteed goals when one or the other of these teams are around. Here's Ward. Ball hands inside it. Crossy going for the near post. Right out coming in as well for a classic header. Paul Ryder, who really is having a purple patch for Everton, extends it here at White Hart Lane. Look at the way he just wraps his foot around this. Tees his end to that near post area. And that's a classic. Southall in the thick of it. With the right fist there. Katsky. to prevent Sheringham striking again. Anderton. Oh, wonderful save. A save that defies belief. Oh, penalty. Gary Mabbott, on his 500th senior appearance for Spurs, brings down Tony Cotty. And suddenly the pendulum swings Everton's way again. Halfway through the second half, this to restore Everton's lead. Yes, through the power 
in the right foot of Coffey. And my goodness, how they needed that, Everton. Begri. Coffey for Begri. Got the capacity to change direction. That's a brilliant shot. It rocketed back towards right out of the frame of the goal. Peter Begri almost pulling a real rabbit out of the hat. Sheringham, Anderton. It came back to Anderton again. Essentially trying to assess an option or two here. Sheringham pulling away. Two two, Dan Anderton. No more than 75 seconds left on the watch. And Southall absolutely furious. The last few minutes were very exciting and fortunately for us and got me out of trouble, Darren Caskey put the ball in. So, very exciting game but delighted with the result. On the other side of London, Chelsea boss Glenn Hoddle was faced with the difficult task of bringing down the high-flying Canaries. Shearer was back to his best, producing a hat-trick at Ellen Road. disappointed because we, we felt that uh, we, we'd done enough uh, to take all three points with being 2-0 and 3-1 up. But I think you've got to give credit to Leeds um, and their players for the way they've come back and the battle back to, to take a point from us. Times were hard for Coventry. QPR moving into fifth place after this win over Bobby Gould's men. His resignation followed shortly afterwards. match that produced two spectacular goals.
seen the spirit in the club, you've seen the character in the club, you've seen the way people fight for this football club. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind that we'll, uh, we'll more than survive over the next few years. Development policy was really paying dividends. Robbie Fowler making a name for himself and knocking three goals home against the Saints. England were left floundering as international minnow San Marino scored the fastest goal in international history to end Graham Taylor's World Cup dream. At the demand of Manchester City fans, Peter Swells resigned as chairman in favour of local hero Francis Lee. Two of the chasing pack had an opportunity to close some ground on the champions in the first week of November. Arsenal failed though to beat Big Ron's men at Highbury. but did score a goal, preventing a record fifth league game in succession without one. Another of the teams hot on United's heels took the game to the Blades at Bramall Lane. Five goals in 104 league games up until the start of this season, six in 11 since. That's Lee Sharp, who's really enjoying his season. Attack inside, no doubt, doubt about that. And I hope it's a, just a, a good day for football and that, that we win. Ryan Horton hasn't lost a match in Main Road, but today he comes up against the most feared side in the country. Manchester United. Can City start hauling back a team that's romping away with the title? Sheeran, right to the right. Quinn to his left. Phelan making up some ground. Sheeran still on the ball. And Quinn comes in. And drops another header past Peter Schmeichel. And scores for the third derby in a row. And Manchester City have drawn first blood here at Main Road. McMahon. In goes Quinn again! It's two! Oh, it's a mistake by Bok. It's Cantona closing in. Manchester United are back in it. A suicidal moment for City. 2-1. Now again. 
looks as if he's got a baton in his hand and is conducting the orchestra. Giggs, oh, it's a super ball, and Cantona is there where it matters. Two for him, two for United, 2-2 two, two is the score. Delightfully delivered. It was Roy Keane. Here's the comeback complete. United believe it is. We proved a lot of people wrong today. I know it didn't look too good when we went 2 0 down, but um, I think in the second half it was a kind of a QPR style comeback and we got the win we, we needed. Newcastle were beginning to get the attention they rightly deserved. New arrivals in the top flight have been making steady progress up the league, thanks largely to the goal-scoring talents of Andy Cole. Will it reach him? It does! It does indeed! It's taken him less than five minutes. Cole wants it from Sellers. It's in! It's two! And Liverpool... Newcastle played very well in the first half an hour. They played well throughout the match, but particularly the first half an hour. We committed suicide really in allowing them to go 3-0 up. Well, they only get three points for it, but obviously you know you know what my feelings are about that club. And uh, with Terry Mapp being here, Venice, Hoops, and Peter Beardsley, who I thought again was magnificent today. Um, it adds a bit more spice to it, but uh, I would love us to win the league and Liverpool finish second. That would be perfection for me. A red-hot Matthew Letizier added two more goals to his tally to take Southampton out of the bottom three. <laughs> On the same day, Swindon finally notched up their first Premiership win from six games. After strenuous negotiations, December saw the beginnings of a peace deal finally brokered in Northern Ireland. Oliver Reed was cleared of charges for grievous bodily harm. A lot of mud has been swung and it's very difficult to scrape it off. And Everton boss Howard Kendall left Goodison Park, resigning after the first home victory for ten weeks. I felt it was it was the right time, and I said that when I when I came back to Everton Football Club, I felt it wasn't right, and I felt that, that certain things were happening or not happening, then I would make the decision. Looking up for Swindon on the brink of a historic victory over Liverpool at Anfield. The happy ending was ruined with the wrong ending from Wright.
Premiership New Boys Newcastle prove they have what it takes to play with the big boys in the top flight. It's hit it and scores his first goal of the season. Andy Cole producing an equaliser from the top draw. The Lee on the run. Can Cole get to the 20 goals? Robert Lee's cross. Andy Cole's header. And it's happiness again all around St James's Park. I think, to be fair, on the day, we deserve to win. I mean, I don't think there's any doubt about that. But uh, we didn't do ourselves justice today. George Graham could only sit and watch his team suffer against Howard Wilkinson's man. I don't know how many times we've played them in the last two or three years, but every game's been very, very difficult. Every inch of the park is is so precious, you know, and we always know we're in for a game playing against Arsenal. But the last two games here at Ellen Road, we've just got on top. Spurs hosted a determined Liverpool, and it was goals galore at White Hart Lane. Excellent game, we could have won that. It might have been a bit unfair for us to have gone on and won it. I think a fair, a fair result was the one we got. What I don't want to see is everybody conceding the championship because I mean that, that takes the value out of it anyway. I think everybody's got to say, certainly we'll be having a crack on Sunday to try and do something about it. Now, you know, if we're not good enough on the day, then we're not good enough, but we'll be having a right good go. Tough cliche now, but we can only just take one game and, and try and hope a bigger get a gap as we can. Uh, we've got a big month coming up, uh, we're all looking forward to it, and uh, let's see how we go after this month. Well, Blackburn, one of our nearest rivals. Um, obviously, if um, we can beat them, it knocks them further back. Snapping into a tackle, Gallagher against Pallister, and still Gallagher, he's got away here. He's given Blackburn Rovers the lead. There was some talk amongst the Blackburn players as they were coming off that they thought it might have been a goal kick instead of a corner. Well, I don't know if you speak English or no, Nick, with all due respect to you, but we just said anything we talk about, this outside of their performance is going to take away from their, their 
tremendous efforts and achievement today and I don't intend to talk about it really. We're competitive, yeah. We're good. I was going to be two top teams. Uh, it was a good battle out there, wasn't it, Pat? The perfect Christmas present for Alex Ferguson as Manchester United were to go into the new year with a 14-point lead after a stunning display against Oldham. When you come away and score five, then obviously it's, it's nice. Here's another historical statistic, by the way, for you. Um, since the war, uh, 23 teams that were top on December the 25th uh, have failed to go on and win the league title, so beware Manchester United. Uh, but not since the days of the late great Danny Blanchflower has a side gone into Christmas with as big a lead as uh, Manchester United have now. Uh, football statisticians say it would be unprecedented for United to throw it all away now. And here's how the table looked at the halfway point. Manchester United, clear favourites for the title. The rest of the chasing pack eager to catch them. At the other end, Swindon Town in trouble. The bottom five conscious of the drop. The FA finally get the man they wanted. Terry Venables named the New England manager. It's a difficult job. But uh, when you come to it and the challenge is there, I, don't, I think you've got to take it. Having failed to meet the standards demanded by Liverpool fans, Graham Souness resigned as manager. And following Mike Walker's departure from Norwich to Everton, the Canaries chairman raised allegations of poaching. I believe that... Uh... Everton, uh, if uh, Mike eventually goes there, are uh, guilty of a breach of the football uh, Premier League regulations. Manchester and football fans across the country mourn the death of the legendary Sir Matt Busby. Their rich vein of form, the champions struggled to beat a defiant Liverpool side playing for pride at Anfield. One of the most entertaining draws of the season. Rush knocking it down, Ince helping it out, Nigel Clough with the shot. And Fowler's in here! Oh, what a start that would have been. Cantona. The mark is not great. John Barnes gets caught under the ball there. And it's from, what, six yards? Alex Ferguson won the first time he brought Manchester United here back in 1986. And of course, he won the last time he brought them here last March. The side are winning again. And they're winning by two goals to nil. A glorious goal from Ryan Giggs. This is incredible. I think it's a first time we've ever seen a free kick given from outside of boxing. United don't have a player in here. Oh, wait, it's three! And everything they hit ends up in the back of the net. And even by Manchester United standards, this is simply stunning. Six. Redner. Clough. This run, he can, it's 3 2! Nigel Clough again! Fowler. And this masterpiece of a match has produced another fantastic goal. Listen, Nigel Clough was named Carling Man of the Match. Perhaps you'd uh, present that bottle of champagne to him. Second best player then, was he? <laughs> yeah, something like that. Well done, Neil. Genuinely, I promise you, genuinely breathless. What about that then? Tremendous, tremendous game. I think they're all waiting there. I think they're going to come out and warm <laughs> down.
want to win matches because we enjoy winning. Uh, we want to take as much from any game we're playing in as what we possibly can. If you're playing the match sheet, you may as well try and win it. Because I don't like enjoy losing, I don't think any players do. Going great guns, um, it's going all went very well for me. Um, another two today, but the most important thing is is another three points. Having been the whipping boys for the majority of the season, fans of the county ground were overjoyed to see Swindon notch up a win over Spurs. Manchester did Sir Matt Busby proud today. The ordinary man paid tribute to a true gentleman. The supporters were here for the football too, the only way Sir Matt would have wanted it. A full house flowing on uneasy emotion, a lone piper led Manchester United and Everton into this magnificent arena. I'm sure of that. We've been pleased at the effort we put in. The commitment was terrific. But we've never really felt smiling and saying to yourself, "I've oh, seen before." Andy Cole is the Premiership's leading marksman, and he's on fire right now. Ball made a good start as New Southampton boss with a solid display against Newcastle. Enough to get them out of the drop zone. Two good teams, uh, two good football insides. Hopefully it'll be a good, uh, good game for the people to watch at home. Joining Gallagher and Shearer in the centre. Shearer! The speciality from a very special player. Uh, important that we got a win today. Um, we had uh, three games in hand before today's game. There's one of them out of the way, and there's another three points. So we're clinging onto the tails of Man United. It's going to be very hard, but uh, as you can see, we're going to give it our best shot. Liverpool lost their FA Cup tie against lowly Bristol City.
and there were now whispers of hope for the treble at Old Trafford. The odds only five to one. Ryan Giggs here. He wants to take them all on for the moment. And Kinchowskis here is on side. And Keane. And the goal for Manchester United. We are looking forward to this one tonight at Upton Park. West Ham United against Norwich City. Sutton here. Oh, and McCluskey doesn't hold it. And it's a terrible mistake by the West Ham keeper. Allen, it was nothing like him. He has a good deflection. He's got it. Off the wall. You know, it was an entertaining game for the fans. By its fifth birthday, the Sky Satellite Broadcasting Network was now a major force in the television industry. As Sky News scooped awards at the Royal Television Society for coverage that was second to none. John Toshak was unveiled as the new coach of the Welsh national side. Jeff Cook stepped down as head coach of England's rugby union side after guiding them through the most successful period in its history. Manchester United were back to winning ways despite conceding two goals at QPR. Desperate to get off bottom spot, notched up their fourth win of the season at Coventry. Manchester United and how they play and what they've achieved. Um, but at the same time, we can only concentrate on our own matches. Ripley. Shearer! Great header! A great goal! Then what do you realise that that was your 50th goal for Blackburn today? Yes, I've just been told, yeah, um, 50 goals. And it's, it's, it's went tremendous for me ever since I've joined Blackburn Rose and um, I'm delighted. I hope there's another 50 to come. Foley's back at the Dell, charged with saving the Saints from the drop. He's ringing the changes. Jim Majilton and Craig Maskell have been brought in. But watch out, Liverpool are going back to basics in their efforts to get back in the big time. towards Maskell and drops to Letizia. Oh, what about that? What a start by Southampton. Play towards a far post and in by Maskell. Dick's on the left foot. Do you believe that Southampton are good enough to stay up, having seen three matches now? Don't be daft, of course I do. With the Canaries in form, Swindon rose to the occasion, justifying their place in the top flight with three goals. Some work here for Sutton to do. And he's got the better of Kilpine. Here's the dangerous Chris Sutton. And that will do for Norwich City. Somebody from Swindon grab an equaliser before the break. Here's Beard up with a great chance and a goal! Yes, they can! And here 
comes Swindon countering with Nicky Summerbeck. Not a lot of support at the moment. Takes on Walker, gets in a good looking cross to Fjord. And that's another one for Swindon. Crook. Nicely measured. And he's at the other side of the bar. Here's Scott, he must score. He has. It's 3-3. With Blackburn hot on their heels, United fans would have a tense wait through their encounter against West Ham. Keane with a cross, it's a good one. And Jules has turned it into the net, it was a very good cross indeed. Oh, an astonishing save. Owens, oh, only makes the first move. Chapman coming round the back. It drops for him, Lee Chapman, he's put it away! Everybody. He's out of his goal. West Ham have still got the ball with Holmes, they've got Morley in the middle. Morley! West Ham United lead Manchester United by two goals to one. Paul Ince leaving it late to save the champions from an embarrassing defeat at Upton Park. By Paul Ince of all people. It's a local derby, it's got a real spice about it. And hopefully, you know, we're going to come out on top because um, both sides need the points. And totally gets a goal that Spurs were threatening and now have achieved. Austin, there might be another here, there is from Jason Gazelle. Keeper. He played as a free spirit behind the front two, that's a lovely ball for Donaghy. Can he make something for himself? And it's in. Off the inside of the post. Kielberg and Steen, 2-2! Two -two. Chelsea really are back in business. Spencer, it's a chance for Chelsea! Well, a phenomenal first half here. And he drills it in, right down the middle, 3-3. Three -three. Certainly turn one point into three if he scores. He does. The way we turn the game round is a credit to them lads in the dressing room because it's all right saying it, but going out and doing it when you're 2-0 down in home in front of your own fans, which is harder to do, I can assure you. It's tough at the bottom and we're down in that sort of dogfight now. We've got to work our way out of it. Headlines in March saw the House of Horrors at Cromwell Street, former home of Fred West, excavated in an attempt to discover the true extent of his crimes. Terrorism was again at the forefront of the nation's conscience, mortar attacks on Heathrow by the IRA, highlighting the weakness of national security. And England got off to a winning start, David Platt captaining the England side with Terry at the helm, to a defeat of Denmark. Platt's made a good forward run. Shearer has found him, and Platt has found a great goal. What a way to start under the new coach. Old Trafford had been a fortress all season, but it was to be breached for the first time by United's bogey team. Chelsea had already beaten United a solitary goal, all that was needed at Stamford Bridge, to take the points. This time, the venue may have been different, but the script was very much the same. United's lead reduced to four points. We came here with a very positive attitude. Uh, we didn't come here fearing them. We came here, you know, respecting them, of course. But um, we went out there and um, I think we matched them. On the back of United's defeat, the chasing pack relished the opportunity to catch up. The Gunners travelling to East Anglia with Ian Wright delivering the goods for the North London club.
a hat trick for the red hot striker and three points for the cause. Newcastle's Andy Cole was looking certain to win the golden boot for his amazing strike rate. But Newcastle proved they could produce goals from anywhere. 7-1 the final score against Swindon. Another derby day, but my Walker's Everton overshadowed by some Anfield brilliance. Dave Watson, Everton lead. Rush, 1-1. But for Fowler, he's in here. Can Liverpool take the lead? Yes. What a moment for Robbie Fowler. It was disappointing because we've gone one in front and uh, we've given it away, which often happens, doesn't it? Lack of concentration, whatever. Uh, and it's a good finish. I'm not knocking that, but from our point of view, it wasn't good. I've got peace of mind in the sense I've got a terrific bunch of players that I can let them go on with it, and I don't, know, I don't, I don't worry too much about them. Swindon rose to the occasion as they welcomed United to the county ground. A fantastic game marred only by a few indiscretions on the pitch. Cantona sent off for stamping. As bottom club Swindon achieved an incredible draw over the champions. The Saints played host to the Gunners as Arsenal moved their title challenge into gear. Bagging three, two hat tricks in as many weeks for the striker. Always been a good defence, you know, like you know, it says the back four know what they're doing. Ed is free here on the far side. Chance for Darren Ed. And Sutton is he onside? He is. Chris Sutton with a chance. And a goal for Chris Sutton. So Norwich City looking for a third goal with the free kick, which is taken by Adams. He's away by Snowden. Chipped in again. His bow in. And that will be number three.
all due respect to Mike, the, the, Mike got the job at Everton, obviously, because the players here performed very well for him for 18 months. And uh, I just said to them before they go out, go out and make sure that uh, you perform as well as you did during the 18 months. And if we, Lady Luck's with us, we'll get our just rewards. I have a certain vested interest in the team that's just beat us. <laughs> and uh, they didn't play bad, did they? Be fair. Another gritty encounter for the Gunners when they took on United. are making the headlines again. For the wrong reason. It was very, very unlucky uh, to be sent off. I think it would have been anyone else. They wouldn't have gone. But looking at it, the more you look at it, uh, I think he was very, very unfortunate. Wimbledon had struggled to make any real impact on the league so far by the time they took on Blackburn. One of the goals of the season was knocked in at Sheffield United. So are Dalgleish and his team now in a real position to take the title race all the way to a photo finish. Shearer strikes again. Graham Lasso with a moment to savour. And you, Blackburn have done it. headlines in April 94 saw Brian Lara steal the centre stage in Antigua with a spectacular performance during the fifth test between the West Indies and England. He's gone for a ball and there it is. Brian Lara has done it. The ball rockets into the boundary fence. The new world record holder is Brian Charles Lara of Trinidad and Tobago. What a moment for Trinidad and Tobago and West Indies cricket. What I'm saying is, um, bigger ways. You know, you have surpassed everyone and it's the greatest feeling I've ever had in my life. While Andy Cole and Eric Cantona both received PFA awards. United could have a chance here with Bruce. Back to goal though. And back to Sharp. Pallister on a little run of his own. What a run from Gary Pallister! Hey, okay. oh, steer it off and has done. Sherwood and Shearer's free! And Alan Shearer scores for Blackburn Rovers. The challengers have taken the lead. Sharp with the cross. And Chowskis, what a shot! An amazing.
amazing shot. All credit to Tim Flowers for keeping it out. Shira chasing it on. He's behind Palace. No can't pull him down. There's the inevitable outcome. They're off the bench. Blackburn Rovers. Shira strikes again. Two nil. The chase is on again. Four days after their heaviest defeat of the season, Blackburn Rovers bounce back with their most significant victory. We've won the match. We've got three points closer. It's going to be very interesting in the next few weeks. World Cups up towards Newell, headed down towards Shearer here. Yes, he's done it again. We know it's going to be our hardest game of the season because we know they're a banging form when they're a top side. United, victims of top of the table complacency, going down to a single goal at Wimbledon. It was a very, very bumpy pitch, so good football was going to be difficult. Whoever wins the league, um, we've done our bit for the rest of the country. A nine-goal thriller when Norwich entertained Southampton. The winner of the PFA Players Player of the Year is Eric Cantona. Professionals' choices, Player of the Year. That's the ball that they want from Hughes to Kanchelskis. Andre Kanchelskis, Cantona is there. Kanchelskis, Cantona. And here's Cantona closing in for a second. There it is. Class. Four games left, uh, and we need to win three. It was an emotional day for Liverpool fans when they played host to Norwich. Brook with the free kick. Redknapp did well to get his head to it. Jeremy Goss. And that's it. A glorious goal on the top end. For Norwich City. An ill fitting farewell to the cop, but the players paying tribute to their loyal supporters. for Gary and friends at Leeds.
get across that there is also a funny side to football. Some things in life are bad. They can really make you mad. Other things just make you swear and curse. When you're chewing on life's gristle. Hey, what's going on here today? Give a whistle. And this'll help things turn out for the best. Who did tell you? Hey. All right, Tad, Always look on the bright side of life. Always look on the light side of life. If life seems jolly rotten, there's something you've forgotten. And that's to laugh and smile and dance and sing. When you're feeling in the dumps, that be silly chumps. Just purse your lips and whistle, that's the thing. Hey, always look on the bright side of life. He's his jacket. He wears the worst jacket anyone's ever seen. And I wish he'd wear longer sleeves to hide his hairy arms and hands. Hair everywhere, except here where I need it. Enjoy it, it's your last chance, anyhow. So always look on the bright side of death. Just before you draw your terminal breath. Looking forward to the game. I hope there's not another goal scored uh, like last year against us and uh, I can drive off with three points after the game. And at that stage that a lot of men get to where they have to place their hair. Thank you. Always look on and even the commentators get it wrong sometimes. Off the top of my head during the commentary, I couldn't quite remember what the degree was in. And I said, well, this goalkeeper, Mike Hooper, really should know his angles. He's got a degree in maths. Or is it English literature? Is it maths or English literature? I'm not sure. But, uh, well, I hope it's maths if he knows his angles. <laughs> He's got a degree in uh, uh, English literature, I think. <laughs> All right, I will. He's my hero. Where's the Where's the where's the news? Darky, come back. Is there a pipe? Darky. World news of May 94 saw Nelson Mandela's election to presidency. And the tragic death of motorsport legend Ayrton Senna. Blackburn Rovers in a chain strip of red and black stripes. They have to win here tonight. Otherwise, Manchester United are the champions of England once again. Coming forward. Flynn. 
the attack this from Coventry. Up goes Boland with the header. And it falls down and it's another goal for Derby. And Coventry City lead by two goals to one. But if Don blows his whistle, it's all over for Kenny Dalglish's side and Manchester United for the second year running are champions of all England. <laughs> Congratulations to Fergie and Manchester United. Obviously, they've stayed the course better than us, and they've won the title, and they deserve to win it because we've got more points than anyone else. Manchester United confirmed their status as defending champions in a 2 0 win over Southampton, who were still battling against relegation. It was to be a tense wait to see if the Saints could avoid the draw. best side in England tonight and they didn't come out here just to mess around they came out to, to, to play in front of their supporters give value for money which they did like good professionals. We've won the league we've set a new record of the Premiership 91 points Sunday's final game before the Cup final so we want to finish a good high note in the league and then look forward to the Cup final We'll battle till the last ounce of energy is in us and we will do that uh, up till Saturday and hopefully at the end of that day when all the whistles go we're still in the Premier League because we'd like to try and progress even further. Some terrific moments but my abiding memory of that season is what happened to Sheffield United. Do you remember that final day? But at one stage I think there was something like 14th or 15th as results went in their favour and with the last kick they're down. I was uh, doing the match at Everton against Wimbledon for a live overseas transmission and they kept feeding me what was the situation as the minutes ticked away and of course Everton escaped right at the end. And at never at any point was, was Sheffield United down until we got across to the other side and that was the news. Everton have done all that they could do for themselves and it looks as though it's enough. I've been saying for a time now and anybody that's listened will know that I've been saying we won't go down. And yeah, you can say that to try and you know, give people a lift, but I didn't, I just honestly felt, and I, I couldn't explain to you why, but I just felt we wouldn't go down. It was a dark day for Oldham's Joe Royal as his team suffered a 2-0 loss to Spurs, which sent them back to the first division. began before kick-off at Old Trafford. Despite a fantastic effort by Eric Cantona, the Red Devils had to settle for a draw. But that didn't spoil the party. United lined up on the edge of the area for Robson's cross. Got it for Cantona! Oh, stupendous stop! to stop what would have arguably been the goal of the entire campaign. But it's Cantona. <laughs> no sentiment from him. <laughs> and no goal from him either, but <laughs> it was very, very close. Glory Chico. He knows he can't go through it, so he thinks he might just get over the wall. Oh, he came very close to achieving it. Manchester United to a draw. The last Premiership points to be allocated this season. One apiece. Manchester United continued. Well, Alex, how much did you enjoy those celebrations at the end? Oh, it was wonderful. I mean, that's, you hope you get that every year in your life. It's absolutely fantastic. You're at the peak then, you know, that's the peak we're at. Um, you see a support like that and the, the celebration is wonderful. That's what playing for Man United is all about. 
you know, you've got 44,000 there. Um, it's a fantastic atmosphere, and that's why loads of players want to play at this club. Um, you know, I, I've had a great, great time here for 13 years, um, so I've got to thank my lucky stars that I've had that. Get raw with the fever on the dance floor. Here's how the final table looked then. Manchester United finishing top, eight points clear of Blackburn. Premiership new boys Newcastle in third. At the other end, the Premiership said goodbye to Sheffield United, Oldham and Swindon. The champions completed the double as they went on to claim the FA Cup. Here goes Cantona for Manchester United. He scores! Fantastic season for Manchester United from Brian McClure. This year, the best side has won them both. The FA Cup to set alongside the championship. Go for goal! 